Hey y'all, I'm Corey. I'm a writer and naturalist based in San Antonio, Texas. And in, in this video, I wanna introduce you to the Texas native shrub, the Turk's cat. Turk's cap is a beautiful flowering shrub native to Texas in the southeastern region of the United States. It's mostly a low growing perennial that's famous for its little red tubular flowers, which are hummingbird magnets. The Turk's cap can spread quite easily and blooms for almost six months per year. Typically, it's gonna grow to be about two to three feet in height, but it can sometimes even reach nine feet. You can see the Turk's cap I'm sitting next to here is maybe about four to five feet. But besides its attractive and interesting look, the Turk's cap is a, a go-to choice in a Texas native landscape due to its heat and drought tolerance. It can also tolerate some moisture, uh, but in direct, direct sunlight, the plant may look a bit wilted. You can see this has a little bit of a wilty look and this area gets a bit more sun than my other locations where I've planted Turk's cap, which we'll talk about later. Additional common names for the Turk's cap include the bleeding hearts, wax mallow, Mexican apple, or the sleeping hibiscus. Its Latin name is Malva viscus drummondii. It likes a bit of sun, I'd say, is, is when you're going to get the most profuse blooms, but it can survive and do quite well in deep shade, in dappled shade, you'll still get a significant number of flowers. And finally, it, it's part of the Malo family. So the Turk's cap is a native plant to the southeastern United States from central Texas to North Carolina and south to the Florida Keys. The plant's distribution also extends even further south to Mexico and in parts of Central America. Here are a, a few benefits of planting Turk's cap for both your garden and wildlife. Let's start for your landscape. First, it's attractive. I think the, the showy bright red uh, tubular flowers of the Turk's cap plant make a really fantastic addition to any garden, introducing this, this really nice striking burst of color for really almost half the year. Second, it, it's low maintenance. So Turk's cap requires minimal care and can thrive in a variety of, of Texas's conditions, and it's gonna continue to, to spread rather significantly. You can see a number of uh, small Turk's cap plants here, which probably have been shot out from the seeds just from its first year. This is year two for this grouping of plants in particular. And then you have to talk about the plant's versatility. The plant is versatile and adaptable to different light. Of course, that level of light will influence how the plant grows and looks, but it's a useful and pleasant addition to a fairly wide range of landscape conditions. And then finally, it's a, it's a wildlife attractant. The, the bright blooms attract pollinators, uh, such as hummingbirds. We're now in late spring, and I've started to see a few on the plant. Uh, it attracts bees, moths, butterflies, and other insects as well. And then finally, if you are uh, uh, interested in this, most all of the Turk's cap is edible. So all parts to the Turk's cap are, are edible just about. Uh, we'll talk more about this later on, but you can use and eat the flowers as in accent uh, or, or test out the apple-like fruits that, that follow the blooms of the flowers. And for wildlife, uh, starting right there on the top, it's a food source. Turk's cap is a really important flower for hummingbirds like the ruby-throated hummingbird on its fall southward migration. Butterflies and, and moths and other insects are also attracted to the, the sweet nectar of the flowers. And finally, it's, it's a host plant. Uh, it acts as the primary host plant for caterpillars uh, of the Turk's cap white skipper. So where is the, the best place to plant Turk's cap? If you're considering Turk's cap in your landscape, here are my suggestions for where or how you might want to utilize it. Uh, first, I, I consider it as a shady ground cover. So Turk's cap can make a good ground cover for shady areas of your landscape where you aren't sure what to plant. Uh, it can fill some space quite nicely. It will remain a bit smaller in the shade, might offer fewer blooms in the shade as well, but still very much so uh, an asset in, in deep shade. Generally, it's an understory plant. So Turk's cap is a good companion to your mature and uh, small and large trees alike. Uh, as it tolerates a wide range of light conditions. So you won't have to worry if it gets shaded out uh, or takes some intense partial sun 
through openings in the canopy as trees mature and grow. Uh, I've planted Turk's cap beneath our mature trees like our live oaks and uh, the Inaqua. Uh, it's also here in this planting uh, going to be underneath a Texas red bud, a young one right now, but in the future uh, it will uh, fill in some space beneath that red bud. Maybe consider it as a, a bed edge. The, the plant can also work excellently as a, as a bed lining. Uh, even in the shade, Turk's cap can still do well and produce flowers. And, and I have uh, plans to plant more Turk's cap uh, along the edge of our screened in porch that we have uh, in the backyard in a location that's part sun shade right off of a, a gutter downspout. Uh, I think it will line that edge of the porch really rather nicely. And then finally, it's worth thinking about utilizing in higher moisture points. So as Turk's cap can tolerate greater moisture, it's worth planting it off the sides of gutter downspouts or low points on your property. It doesn't like its roots remaining wet, however, so, so don't plant it where it will be in standing water uh, for very long. The edges of these moisture points are, are really nice or just areas that dry up quickly. You know, we're here on a low point of a rainwater harvesting berm, but this area is really not staying wet that long as we get a lot of direct sun coming in throughout the day. Caring for a Turk's cap uh, is really quite easy. Once established, the Turk's cap doesn't require any additional watering. Uh, in winter, you can prune it all the way back to encourage bushier, more compact growth and more blooms the following year. Uh, I'd recommend cutting it back uh, to about four or five inches above the ground. Some companion plants for the Turk's cap, uh, I believe it, it pairs well with other shade tolerant plants such as uh, a wood fern, lyre leaf sage, and holly fern, uh, but as well as some other plants that it can visually complement include the, the uh, American Beauty Berry, the Chili Pekin, a Yelp and Holly, maybe the Wax Myrtle Coral Berry, which we have right in here. Uh, this will continue to fill in uh, in this space here. Uh, as well, Pigeon Berry, a low growing, a Texas native, more so uh, kind of herbaceous uh, plant, and inland sea oats uh, or even tropical sage. So what to expect season to season? Uh, a Turk's cap plant during the, the four seasons, uh, starting in spring, uh, your plant should grow pretty quickly, producing a noticeable amount of new green leaves and, and tiny buds of flowers uh, ready to bloom. Here in later spring, and I definitely see blooms all uh, over uh, this plant, you know, and obviously it's flowering already and looks really great. But by summer, your plant should be at its best. As it starts to bloom in late spring, as we're doing here with this plant, uh, my, my Turk's cap in, in greater shade aren't blooming uh, to this extent. But in summer, it's, it's really uh, putting on a display of spectacular color, ideally. This is its prime time. But as the weather becomes colder, the green foliage on, on your Turk's cap may yellow uh, a little bit, but it continues to bloom. And then finally, in winter, uh, your Turk's cap rests. So it, it might die back and, and freeze in cold enough temperatures. In San Antonio, uh, it, it will here and I'll end up uh, cutting it back typically. But it's best to prune it back after the last chance of frost to still allow the plant to protect itself in case of an, another freeze. But before late winter, uh, when it starts to warm up here in San Antonio, uh, that when that time spurs new growth. So it will return with good growth the next season. So as for some medicinal and edible uses, Turk's cap flowers can be used to make a tea that resembles hibiscus. These flowers turn into tiny apple-like fruit in, in late summer, and that fruit is, is edible raw or uh, cooked, and it, it's a favorite of hummingbirds and other wildlife uh, with a taste that apparently uh, resembles watermelon or apples. I, I can't speak to this firsthand experience here, but I'm sure I will I'll test them out. Uh, later on. The leaves of this plant are all also edible, but preferably the young leaves are best. The other ones will, will feel a bit more uh, coarse to them, and so those young leaves can resemble something more so of a, a baby spinach. There's a bit of a different taste to it. All in all, very similar. So finally, Turk's cap has uh, been historically used to treat diarrhea and the leaves and roots can also be used externally to treat chest congestion. As for uh, propagating Turk's cap uh, from seed, Turk's cap can be easily propagated. I, I'm sure that these smaller young plants here that we have all over 
this berm, those uh, have sprouted out from seeds that have shot out from, from these very healthy mother plants here. So Turk's cap can also be propagated from cuttings, uh, preferably softwood cuttings that would be taken in summer. And so ideally those cuttings are taken from uh, a Turk's cap with strong side shoots. Uh, these cuttings should be four to six inches long uh, with the leaves removed from the lower half. Uh, you can then treat those cuttings uh, with a bit of rooting hormone, plant it in well-draining soil, and keep it under intermittent mist. Uh, Turk's cap cuttings can be rooted in as little as three weeks. All right, y'all, so before we finish up, I wanna give you some side-by-sides, essentially, of the, the various Turk's cap plantings that we have on our property, so you can see the contrast between uh, each one of them, different light, moisture context, uh, and as well, companions if we we do have them nearby so you can get some ideas yourself or as well you know offer me some some ideas or, or criticisms too I'm open to it all so first things first this planting that you might be most familiar with now here Turks cap that has grown rather significantly uh, certainly about four to four uh, uh, approaching five feet so far and this is done super well we have many of the, the uh, new young uh, Turks caps sprouting up here, and this is in its second year. Uh, this Turks cap is complemented with some coral berry. That is likewise, we have two plants here that are, that are doing uh, really, really well um, and, and spreading all throughout the sperm. So, you know, this will be a big kind of mashup of coral berry and Turks cap. And then really at the, the crest of this rain uh, water harvesting berm is the, the Texas redbud, which is uh, still quite a small young tree, but that Turks cap is at the base of this berm. So, you know, there we can imagine that, that the moisture levels should be highest. That should be where the greatest amount of water accumulates and runs down uh, off our driveway here. So this Turks cap gets more sun, probably gets more moisture than my other plantings as well. And so while it can look a bit wilty, I do love the look of it and, and it's, you'll see the difference, uh, the, the just overall quantity of blooms. Um, they look really, really great. And so I'm quite happy with this. Strangely, there was a fourth plant here in this gap. I'm not too worried about it now as all the Turks cap uh, has seemed to, to seed out. Uh, and we'll see some more Turks cap growing rather significantly in the years to come. But there was one that didn't make it for whatever reason there. So uh, we do have three plants here that have established rather nicely. The fourth didn't make it for one reason or another. So let's check out a different set of plantings here. As you can see right now, actually, as we flip, it, flip things around, there is sun coming through. You know, we're here in the morning. The sun is relatively low uh, in the sky. Got our dogs back here saying hello. But these Turks cap plants are, are much, much more compact. And they are off a, a gutter downspout, and so you know maybe they're, they're getting more water and moisture than they otherwise uh, would be. But these plants here are doing okay. Now this, the, the one that's doing the best is actually shaded at this point in time, which is kind of interesting. But that's the, the only one with a bloom right now to speak of. And they're here underneath our uh, live oak tree. Their performance has been, you know, so-so, but nonetheless, they are coming back each year as well. And then our, our final planting here is actually in a bed that is beneath our mature Anakwa tree. And so there is the occasional light that gets through here earlier in the day. These Turks caps are gonna see some of it. They are uh, starting to get some blooms in here. And we have a second plant right next to it. But as well, we got more coral berry, a couple coral berry plants. We have a Yaupin holly here uh, coming in. And this Turks cap is, is doing pretty well here. And behind it, you'll see a cross vine. There's a Virginia creeper. Um, and as well to the left here, down low, can't really tell, but we have some Mustang grape. So this Turks cap, definitely more compact than the one that, that gets very significant uh, light throughout the day at the base of the, the rainwater harvesting berm. But these plants look uh, decently healthy, uh, certainly healthier than, than our second location there.
All right, y'all, that's a wrap. Along with my own experience working with Turks Cap in my landscape and learning from my observations out in Texas's natural areas, uh, I've collected all the books and resources that, that I consulted in producing this video and in the, the uh, companion post uh, over at EnsembleTexas.com. You can find that linked in the description below. And lastly, uh, if you want to get started with landscaping uh, with Texas native plants but, but don't know how to get started, consider checking out uh, my free cheat sheet. You can find that on EnsembleTexas.com backslash freebies or again, that'll be linked down below. All right, y'all, until next time.